Welcome back to Invest Global. Today we're focusing in on Binance Smart Chain Pad. Now, this is a Launchpad project we have covered in the past. The reason we're returning to it is we're going through this Launchpad ecosystem map series. The link for the full playlist where we've gone through literally every single blockchain out there with Launchpads on it. You know, everything from Avalanche to Cardano to Solana. Um, you, we went through Ethereum Layer 1, Ethereum Layer 2 with Polygon, and now we're focusing in on Binance Smart Chain Pad after finishing out all of the smaller blockchains uh, out there with Launchpads. Binance Smart Chain Pad is, uh, they, they at least describe themselves as the first decentralized uh, IDEO platform on Binance Smart Chain. But, you know, a lot of projects, I, I see this trend of claiming to be the first blah, blah, blah in the blockchain network. So it's important to actually differentiate, you know, what is and what is not what they claim to be. You know, just like when you, when you go to a city, like, for example, I'm here in a crack off Poland and uh, or, or, you know, you go to New York. They, you go by coffee shop and they say, hey, we're the number one. We have the world's best coffee or whatever it is, right? So th this is something where uh, it's you have to take it for what it is, really. Um, so anyways, we'll be going through all things with this uh, Binance Smart Chain pad and some updates um, from our previous video. But like I said, um, the reason I'm doing this whole Launchpad ecosystem series is there's so many opportunities out there to get in pre-IDO tokens, so essentially private sales um, in, in early stage altcoins. But the most important thing is differentiating, differentiating, okay, what are the best launch pads versus what are the ones maybe you don't want to participate in? And I'm looking at, okay, what's the minimum allocation? Is it a guaranteed allocation? Is it a lottery allocation? We'll be talking about all that and more and actually showing you exactly how you can actually participate in the IDOs here on Binance Margin Pad. I mean, see here so you can view all the projects they have launched. Um, you can buy this uh, BSC pad token here on PancakeSwap and also apply for the IDO. Um, also, you can follow them here on Twitter at BSC pad. I highly recommend you do to stay up to date with uh, any, anything that they're uh, building. And then also follow us at investglobal underscore IO. But let's actually get into the meat and potatoes of Binance Smart Chain Pad. Um, we talked about this a little bit. So they basically empower, just like any launch pad, right? They're empowering new projects to gain liquidity, gain um, capital. Um, why choose them? I do like what they say as far as the low barrier to entry. Um, this is very, very true. So inclusive and low barrier to entry. Uh, right now, I think it's uh, around a thousand um, BSC pad tokens to get into the first um, tiered, which we, we're going to talk about here in a second. So I'd put you right around uh, $440 um, at the current price. I'm recording this on um, July of 24th. I do think this token could retrace a little bit further, to be quite honest. Um, it pumped up there to like around six and a half dollars. Um, and now it's, you know, it's retraced. I do think it could drop a little bit further, to be quite honest with you. Um, just looking at the market cap, um, what are we at? Yeah, around, what, quarter of a hundred million dollars, so around $24 million. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. So um, we talked about this. As, as far as that goes, I mean, we can just hop right into the allocations, right? So you have to understand there's kind of two rounds of allocation. We talked about this in the previous uh video on Binance Smart Chain Pad, but essentially there's the allocation round and then what I, I think they renamed this one to the FCS round. So this is kind of the secondary round, um, but let's focus here on the on the initial allocation round one. Um, so like I said, the first uh, to get in bronze, the staking requirement is a thousand. So that would put you right around, yeah, 44, um, around 44, sorry, $440, my apologies. <laughs> and uh, so staking length requirement, three allocation before the allocation round opens. Very, very simple to do this. You just go to uh, the decentralized application here or here. Um, and uh, this is, would give you a pool weight of 10. So that's always very important to understand what the pool weight is. Um, the pool weight goes all the way up to 700 plus, which is pretty massive. But that's for private round allocations. I'm assuming most people don't have $75,000 um, worth of this token. But hey, if you do, well, that would really be closer to like, what, 3000 um, yeah, closer to like, oh, I guess it would be $30,000. Yeah, but that's still a lot in Binance March Impact token. Um, let's see. So whitelist requirements, uh, like, comment, and retweet. That's pretty much the same for these initial two. Guaranteed allocation, yes, yes, here. Um, again, it goes with the pool weight of 30. You increase it by 1,500 here for the silver round. And then for gold, you don't have to do any of this like, comment, and retweeting. But all of these for, remember, this is the, the round one. Um, our guaranteed allocation. You have the pool weight increasing over time. Um, then here you see the platinum staking requirements, 10,000. Uh, this is where you have massive, massive pool weight. So this is a big, big jump to 145, 400 for 25,000. Then for 75,000, you have 700 plus, plus private allocations. And then the second round, this is what I find very interesting. And I kind of think there's the there's a little bit of a value add here with a Binance Smart Chain Pad is um, they, they have added this FCFS round, um, which is pretty powerful in my opinion. So this is the first round, like I said, is the allocation round. With this FCS uh, round, we will talk about this. So um, the unsold tokens from the first round are made available. All tiered members can purchase an additional amount that is determined by their tiered-based formula. The second round buying window opens at the same time for all members, 
regardless of their tier level. So you have the same access as someone in the diamond versus someone in the, if you're in the bronze category. So that's something to take in, into account. Um, moving on from that, uh, let's see here. The round is open until all tokens are sold, typically the last um, only a few minutes. After the tokens are sold, the IDO is concluded. So I think this this uh, strategy is actually really interesting because there's some launch pads out there where they don't actually fill up the full pools. And then there's some that, hey, the, the pool gets filled right away um, and uh, there's not a big problem. But if there's any kind of a lagging effect to the IDO, this essentially ties up those loose ends. And anyone who's like more passionate about this project, they can gain more allocation. And anyone who's like, hey, you know, I already got my allocation, they, they're not forced into, right? So essentially, th this is an option on... Um, acquiring more tokens in the secondary round. Um, let's see here. Yeah, and, and I do like this. Const they're constantly trying to learn. They're constantly trying to optimize this. So they're talking about, you know, we're constantly um, collecting data. Um, our system is a predictable and uh, provably fair system, giving the users proper incentives to accumulate and hold tokens and support tech in, ver in every project launch. Over time, we will tweak the weights, add new tiers. So I like that they're always adapting. So keep that in mind. You know, if you're watching this in 2022, um, these things might be different. That's why we have all the official links. Basically, in any video I do, I make sure to have all the official links down below in the description. So you know exactly what I'm talking about on, on the exact websites. And you're not on some Fugazi site. So uh, Incubator Investment um, Partners, Blue Zilla, um, Legal Partner here is Silk Legal. You can see all the different things you can contact there. Um, these are their actual projects. Um, none of them are open now, but the coming soon projects are kind of interesting. So you have Fandize, the first um, creator NFT platform. So we can see that. Um, Purify, one-stop compliance protocol for DeFi. EthPad, Polar Fox Network. These are the closed projects. And we can see all of these have, you see they completely full, completely full. I think some of them maybe they're lacking a tiny, tiny bit. Like uh, that's really nothing. Um, but yeah, basically all of these are 100%. I don't see many that are, um, some of them are even, I guess they have some some bug issues where they can go a little bit over 100%, which is interesting. Um, yeah, I don't see any of these under, oh, this is the first one that was under NFC stars. Uh, yeah, so personally, I'm not the biggest fan of investing in all these NFT ones. I like more things uh, that are, I don't know. I think the NFT play, it, it's a bit dil diluted of a market. Everybody and their mothers trying to create uh, an NFT platform. So I, I do think, obviously, long term, this is going to be massive. But I, I personally don't think this just NFT art platforms are the way to go. I like to see the use cases and things like real estate. So if someone's building an NFT platform and they're focusing on like deeds or they're focusing on tickets to like um, to sell like a, an NFT service to uh, local sports teams or um, concerts, things like this. That's what I find interesting. I'm curious what you guys think about uh, NFT projects. I just see there's so many of these going on in this space and um, it's a bit overdone in my opinion. Um, you know, just like you saw the dot-com boom, right? You have to separate out the pets.com from the amazon.com, right? Everybody thought, oh, pets.com, that's an awesome domain name. Didn't really end up being anything. Amazon.com ended up being something, even though they started out being a books, book selling books online, something that was a bit more boring, just like, hey, maybe you think uh, NFTs for real estates or NFTs for uh, deeds or birth certificates or passports or driver's licenses, right? Like essentially analog documents, you might go, oh, that's boring. You know, I only like NFTs for, uh, for art or for video games. Well, that's what everyone's doing now, right? So you have to look at a bit contrarian and go, okay, what are some other opportunities out there for non-fungible tokens? And that's why I think uh, some of these other things are impressive. So also here, I, I do like when projects have this laid out. So they have their uh, actual IDO calendar. And we can see these already occurred. And then you can see moving forward. Oh, like I said, today is July 24th. So apparently these are these are coming soon, even though they're not, um, they don't show them here. Um, even though, yeah, they don't have, or actually, yeah, they do. My apologies. They don't show the projects that are open now. Um, like I said, it's three hours before. So these are the upcoming ones. It's it's uh, powerful to be able to stay on top of these things. Um, besides that, I mean, there's not a ton left to say. Uh, like I said, follow them here on Twitter because that way you can see, you know, if there's any updates, if they run into any bug problems, you can kind of stay up to date with the projects, how they operate, you know, if they're following through on, on the promises, if they're following through on the roadmap. Um, yeah, if you guys want to see another video on this, I'd be happy to make it. Um, if you have any questions about all the launch pads, the most important thing is not looking at these in a vacuum, right? You might go, oh, you know, if you're only watching this video and you're not watching all the other launch pad ecosystem map series videos, um, you don't see all the other opportunities in all the different blockchains, right? So beyond Binance Smart Chain, which is, let's just be straight honest, a little bit more susceptible to, uh, to hacks, to pump and dumps, um, there's pretty much anyone and their mother can, again, launch a token on Binance Smart Chain with relative ease, right? Um, it doesn't take a, a whole lot of know-how to do. There's not a high barrier to entry. 
Um, so some of these things I, I take a little bit more. Uh, I personally, I when I'm allocating to a network like a Polkadot or Cardano or um, Ethereum, I allocate a little bit more than I would in Binance Smart Chain. I'll just be straight up honest with you. And that's not to say I haven't made a lot of money with Binance Smart Chain. I mean, I, I called PancakeSwap when it was under 50 cents. So it went, went up, I think, to like $40. So this is like an ADX. So obviously, the, I've made a decent amount of capital with uh, with Binance Smart Chain. I think there's some interesting projects on here. But again, it's, it's kind of like uh, they're providing this platform. And now just because you're saying you're on the Binance Smart Chain doesn't mean you're a good project, right? Anyone can launch the Binance Smart Chain. But um, it's important to separate out what is the actual quality from the not so quality. So I do like Binance Smart Chain, Pat. I'm curious, again, what you guys think about it. So let me know down below in the comments. You can also follow us on Twitter at investglobal underscore IO, like I said, and our Telegram group chat with uh, just a group of like-minded uh, global investors is linked down below in the description. Right around 45 cents, like I said. Um, Mark cap is around $24 million. 24-hour trading volume is quite low. Um, circulating supply to max supply. You can see that. Um, we've Yeah, like I said, we retrace. We're about six and a half dollars back down to um, to forty five cents. Yeah, so all time low is that thirty six cent mark. Um, it's it is interesting to uh, acquire some of these tokens because if if you're you know if you wanted to get into these IDO pr projects and you're trying to buy up when it's at six dollars and fifty four cents, um, you know that that at, at that point in time, you know this for example list here, you're going to be end up paying what six six thousand five hundred bucks versus right now it's like under five hundred bucks. So. Interesting things to take a look at. That's basically all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, whatnot, invest global, and until next time.